friends, glad to see you made it. For we have gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, he's alive. And soon he will return to the earth and to, to make things right. And you say, how's it going to make things right? All evildoers, all unbelievers will be wiped off the earth. You know, I want to remind you, as Veterans Day or whatever military day you guys worship, I want you to know that that, that people of Jesus Christ, of the Church of God, we, we, we are to be different and set apart from the rest of the world. And this is the problem today. You can't tell the difference between a Christian and, and a non-believer. You can't tell the difference. Why? Because everybody in America goes around saying evil is good and good is evil. And you say, how do you say that? Because all these preachers and teachers around America who invite these veterans in, and I understand, maybe they've turned their lives to God, and that's a good thing. Glory be to God, you, you, you will live. But, but did you ask to bring Satan into the house of God and ask God in heaven to bless somebody for murder and killing? Jesus Christ told the world. God Almighty told the world. And every human being who lives on the world, thou shalt not kill. He didn't say everybody except those who are in the army. No. Every human being on the earth shall not kill. No way. You ain't getting to heaven if you do it. And if you do it in the name of God, where is that going to do you? Because only Satan would say that. And that's the trouble today. We look out and we see the the. the People, men and women today who want to preach the word of God and, and boy, they're all about giving their testimony. Let me tell you for two hours about my life. And, and who cares? You're an evil person. Because there's only one life. There's only one man, one name that we are all saved. That is Jesus Christ. So let's teach, preach his words. What he said. What he tells us to do. Preachers and teachers out there telling you that God wants you to prosper into being the richest person in town. They are false prophets of God. Anybody teaches you that, that it's okay to, to, to bring in the world armies, recognition of armies, murder, bloodshed, violence. Bring that into the house of God. You, you're a whore. You're a whorelet. God Almighty and the men and women of God, we, we live for love for one another. And you say, how can you call us whores? Because you are out whoring around in the world. A good bride, a good wife, sticks to their husband like glue. To, to praise their husband, to, 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 to obey their husbands. And what is the obedience of God? That all men would have life through Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ came to bring repentance to man, to change our hearts and our minds and our way of life. You know, preachers and teachers today are all proud to say, come to my house, my church, and sit right here, and we will teach you the Word of God. But not one of them got the guts, the gall, the faith to walk out into that dark, evil, adulterous world and spread the love of Jesus Christ. You know, if the message at church isn't, all those 
who, who wish to live and have eternal life must lay down their will. For if you try to save your own life, you will die. But those who lay down their life for Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ shall have eternal life. And that is the message that should be preached. You know, many preachers today are stuck in the law, stuck in this sinful talk, and trying to get you all to, to bring your, your thank offerings and your tithes and your stuff to them. But, but God said, store up all that money. Bring it there so you can put it back out to the people in need. Not, not to hoard it and then buy mansions. Not to hoard it and buy jet airplanes and, and millions of dollars for me and here's one for you. One million for me and one for you. Is that the word of God? He says to them, when Satan, when Satan's children are sitting there at God asking him, who do we pay this tax to? Caesar? And Jesus says, the only time God asks for money, because he had none, not a dime, says, has anybody got a coin? And they give him a coin. He says, you see whose picture's on that coin? Give it back to them. All of it. Give it back. And they will have no power over you. God Almighty is in heaven and He's our Father. And see, it is through our disobedience we have money to, to, to even power over us. The insurance to put power over you. It is you and your unbelief in God that you would allow men to do that. And the church is so horrid that they don't even care that the, the, the Word of God is not reaching the children of God, the high schoolers, the, the, the middle schoolers, the, the, the elementary kids, all children in America, because we're too ashamed of the name of Jesus Christ. We might offend a Muslim, a Satan worshiping Muslim. Get out of here. You have let those people into our country and God will curse you for that. You have let them into our Washington, in our house. Every one of them are Satan worshipers and everybody who says that God blesses the American army is a Satan worshiper. Do you not understand God said thou shalt not kill? Every man and woman, he's telling you, you cannot kill and come into the heaven. You're not coming. And if you can't lay down your will to, to, to be the richest man in town, to have everybody patting you on the back because you can't quit your testimony and your story, and what about you, you, you? You are a Satan worshiper, and you are misleading these people. If you don't think that insurance is a way to oppress the human beings of this earth, you are a Satan worshiper and you don't believe in God or the hand of God that is here to deliver His people in health, in sickness, in whatever we need. His hand is there for us. The design of Jonah is upon you. This evil, wicked generation gets one thing, the sign of Jonah. You want a miraculous sign? Listen to the hundreds and thousands of people screaming out to you every day. Turn to Jesus Christ or perish. There's no in between. You bring that world out from there into the house of God and it's because you're not right with God. If you think that the blessings of God can be seen through your finances, you don't know God. 
If you're sitting there at home going to church and you got guns in your house ready to murder anybody that's going to touch your stuff, you don't know God. Put it down. Put down this violence. Put it down. Anybody who is ashamed of Jesus Christ, if you're not willing, Church of America, to stand up and figure out a plan to get the Word of God back into God's children, you are going to be cursed. And the lights are coming out. He's going to just roll up the sky like a scroll. It's gone and terror will come upon you like you've never seen before. God's not angry with the unbelievers. He's angry with the church for not putting their faith in Jesus Christ. He will bless you. He will heal you. He will defend you on that day. If you don't take refuge in Him, you'll be crushed by the mountain of God. He's coming. Every day all across the world, they're screaming out, Come, Jesus, come! Put an end to this suffering. Put an end to wicked people. And we look around and we're all wicked. Damn, we're all not going to go. No one. Why? Because we cannot lay down our will. We must have them say to us, What a great guy you are. And it can't be about our Lord. Our, we should be thanking God. Always thanking God. We need to pray. I'm sick of going to church and watching God destroy these people's, millions of people's homes, and we can't even take 10 minutes of time to pray for them. Wakes out Oklahoma and then these churches here, and they don't even pray for these people. Won't even ask for love. Could care less. They're so trapped in their own bodies and their own lives that they don't even see what God can see. Forever blind. Forever deaf. It's sad. Jesus says, anybody I choose is coming. And he said, I choose you all. I choose you all. Come, let's go. And we just deny him in every way. This is love for one another. If you think that you can bring the military into the house of God and ask God to, to bless their murderous, violent ways, you are not going to be in a good spot when Jesus comes. And when he leaves, only his children are going, only those who love. And I'm not sure if he's coming to, to take us away. He's just coming to, to pull us to the side as he destroys the rest of you. And you say, you won't make it. They say, oh, people will make it through the tribulation. You're teaching bad stuff. They won't make it through. You live in the tribulation now. Can't you sit just because God hasn't destroyed your house and you're sitting there on top of the mountain bragging about it and won't even give them the time of day to pray for them? You're not right with God. Without a heart, without the heart of Jesus Christ who was here to live and die for all the world. Not just you, not just these people, but everyone. How can we be so selfish? How can we look and say that there's no tribulation going on? They're testing you. God's testing your heart now. He's asking the world today, who do you believe in? Who do you believe in? As I come down and wipe your home off this earth, who are you going to pray to? Who is going to deliver you from the wrath of God? Who? There's only one. 
Jesus Christ. He's the only man, the only creation, the only thing that's going to deliver us. And all the rest will be destroyed. He comes to take your home. Don't go for the rebuild. Don't put it all back. You leave the field. Leave it behind. And turn to God. Turn to Jesus. This is like when people come steal from you. Look how angry you get. Look how, how violated you are when someone steals something from you. Why? Because your heart ain't right with God. It is His. And He said if they steal it, you give it to them and give them some more along the way. Don't get angry. Don't get upset. The Satan's trick. I'm going to steal this thing here that I know hurts. I'm going to rip it right out from under your hands. Because I know your heart is there. And so he takes it to get you mad and unforgiving. You know? Don't be a whore to, the, to, the, to our God. You're the bride of Christ. Act like the bride of Christ. If you think that... Come up with a plan to get the Word of God out there. How are you going to get these, the Word of God back into the hearts of the children of the earth? Sitting on your butt in, the, in church, bragging to the world that God hasn't brought disaster upon you because you're blessed. You're a false prophet. If you're teaching people that to, 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 to continue fighting and grabbing on to this world as being to, to, to lift your social status along the way. You are a false prophet. And you don't know God. If you preach the word of God all day and I don't care if you memorize that Bible and you have no love in your heart, you are a false prophet. You are not of God. You are teaching people that, 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 that this is the way to heaven. Raise your hand and say the sinner's prayer. You are a false prophet and you don't belong in the heavens with God. Because it's not about saying the sinner's prayer. It's about turning your heart. It's about taking the money and the insurance and the things they use to oppress us and stuffing it in their face. Because you're not going to have that power over us. No man on this earth will po have power. We will not bow down to Satan, his mark, his name, or his ways. We will bow down to Jesus Christ and his love and mercy. Satan is greed. Satan is lies. Satan is hate. Satan is anger. Satan puts jealousy in you. Satan makes you want to be an adulterer. I don't want to give up the world. I don't want to give up my career. I don't want to give up my social status. I don't want to go out into the dark world and let the Lord's light shine. I'm afraid to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ out there where they don't believe in Jesus Christ. If you're a preacher and teacher and it's your testimony is more important than the testimony of Jesus Christ, you are a false prophet and you don't belong there. If God Almighty didn't come to you and speak to you and say, you have been chosen by God to speak the word of God, then, then you shouldn't be in the pulpit. You should be out there in the streets with the rest of all those. 
in the pews, sitting back doing nothing, as they watch the world be destroyed and cannot even give ten minutes of prayer, of faith, of hope. It's all about us. It's so about us that we forget that God loves everyone. You reject, you reject these people and you, you are rejecting God. You know? And to ask the, the military to come into to, to the house of God where we're supposed to be love and mercy. Ah, oh, those people protect your rights to say the word of God without persecution. Jesus Christ told us they will persecute you. They're going to persecute you because if you love me, you'll be out there in that dark world getting persecuted, beat up, squashed down, because of the love you have for Jesus Christ and his lost sheep. Persecution comes with the job. Don't you get it? If you're too afraid to be persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ, he will be ashamed of you. What are we going to do? Turn down your, you, you turn down your will and pick up the will of God. And the will of God is that all men believe in Jesus Christ, was sent by God, for He is God in the flesh, to show us how to live our lives according to the will of God. Heavenly Father, I, I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ to come into our hearts and souls. Bless us, Father, with peace so that, so that we may be one with Jesus Christ, just as Jesus, our Christ, is one with you. Come, Father, have mercy on us. Open these eyes, open our ears, open our heart to receive Jesus Christ. Love, mercy. That that is God. That is you, Father. Let each and every person on this earth today see the glory of Jesus Christ shine through us. Just as He let the your glory shine through Him. Oh Father, strengthen us. Give us wisdom and understanding. Open our ears and our eyes to know that, that this world is broken and without you it's only going to get worse. Heavenly Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, if it be your will, not my will, but your will, if it be your will, I ask you, God, to Hold back the rain upon the earth today. Hold back the rain upon the earth. Let no rain touch it anymore until they repent or our Lord returns. For we know, God, it is you, O oh Father, who are turning the hearts of men back to you. Help us, Lord. Hold back the rain until they repent. Lord Jesus comes. In your holy name I pray. Not my will, but yours. Amen. See you next time.